Welcome everyone. This is Debbie Mayberry with National Kitchen and Bath Association. You are here for our third webinar of the month on outdoor spaces. Today's session is called 10 Ways to Refresh Your Outdoor Living Designs for Summer with Carrie Kelly. She is the CEO and Creative Director of Carrie Kelly Design Lab. And Carrie, if you're there, we're ready to get started. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is so exciting to have a full class of over 400 people. I know you have a lot of distant distance learning environment choices here. So to have people not only from the United States, but from Canada, Qatar, Argentina, Spain, Haiti, I, I welcome all of you from around the world. And I have a lot of good news for you, whether you're a manufacturer, a designer, or a vendor in our design market. Um, I think there's a lot of great news here and there's no better time to be talking about really refreshing outdoor spaces, creating outdoor spaces, and the innovation that our manufacturers have provided to have materials outdoors. Um, outdoor living spaces are on the rise, and that's the good news. Um, and it really doesn't matter what area we're talking about. If there's interest in outdoor living areas across the country, and that's both for warm and cold climates. So designers uh, in suburban areas and working on luxury project, projects have seen the biggest increase, but I think there's also a conversation about wellness. And now that a lot of us have been hunkered down at home, we're really appreciating how fresh air and that vitamin D and that wellness component really contributes to our life in a positive way. And these outdoor spaces are what is supporting that type of a lifestyle where we're able to blur the lines between indoor and outdoor spaces. I really appreciate the National Kitchen and Bath Association, number one, for doing research, but also working with people like Interior Design Magazine, who has, they've provided all the imagery here that is um, inspirational, you can take elements from each of these images and really kind of feel yourself nestling in there or maybe applying something to a design or a product moving forward. So there's some great ideas in these images that you can carry with you um, regardless of what your job is. Or e even if you're just a homeowner, you might wanna incorporate some of these things. Um, as research shows, uh, and as you can read on this slide, we've spent 90% of our time indoors and even more so right now. And with that new product innovation and where we used to be very protective of what fabrics were inside and what fabrics were out, outside, there's really a blurring of the lines. And as designers, um, at least for me here in California, I'm able to look at a house and think of it with a whole palette approach where I can bring indoor fabrics out and outdoor fabrics in, mix and match, and really the sky is the limit. So I love this room that's bringing in sunlight and you can just see how those doors, those French doors there off to the side can blur that line that we're talking about. I think the rules have been broken along the way when it comes to indoor and outdoor spaces. And, and this is just a great image to show that where we have um, almost like a greenhouse feeling to this space, but we have artwork hanging, we have fresh potted plants, we have uh, little terrariums off to the side there on the right where that might be a work area. And you can just picture yourself nestling on that sofa and reading a book. And I think with natural light streaming in and uh, just that fresh air when those doors and windows are open, we carry on a, a whole different vibe, a whole different um, feeling when we're living in our home. So that, that thoughtful design is truly key. And um, I'm gonna show you some ways to layer it on. I know we initially said that we have a, a 10 ideas for, for you. I think I might've gone a little bit overboard, but I, I just really wanna be able to share with you all the opportunity that we have um, to create these spaces especially when we have homeowners who are really asking for it. So this one in Take It Outside, um, going back to the innovation of materials, fabrics, and design, we're even seeing furniture manufacturers not only have outdoor furniture, but furniture that looks like it would be indoors. So 
loungy pieces that have indoor outdoor fabrics that can be slip covered, very washable. And I think a lot of it involves layering, this layering approach of different fabrics and a real coziness that spills to our outdoor areas. Um, I've shown you a couple more kind of California room approaches, but you can see off to the side there, we have that sliding door where we're really considering elements, um, you know, whether that's a, a teak wood or um, even the stone that you see on the floor there, spilling indoors and out to kind of that feeling you have when you visit tropical places like Hawaii, where there is no beginning and end to the indoor and outdoor spaces. They just really complement each other. I love that little bar cart there off to the side where you can roll up elements. You could easily roll up that kind of fuchsia hot pink table. You could roll that on outside. So we're seeing pieces of furniture that can be quote unquote taken outside um, and rolled back in depending on weather. Again, in this picture, we have a lot of plants, uh, flowers, um, really, again, blurring that line for us once again. Even organic elements on, on that floor where we have the indoor outdoor rug, it looks truly indoor. We've seen some real innovation and a lot of recycled materials when it comes to that anchoring piece with area rugs that can really define a space. And then you can see just layered on top, bringing that organic feel back in by using such a, a pretty table that can almost be seen as artwork. Um, and while this room is covered, um, having the mirror on that back wall, we've done a lot of mirrors even outdoors and just let it kind of patina and do its thing and really appreciate what the weather is doing to it. With all of this, you really want to consider the client. And just as we consider the client needs and as a designer, we really interview our client a lot just to understand how they're going to use the space, what their lifestyle is like, are there kids, are there pets, are there multiple generations living in a space? How will they use this? Are, are they an entertainer? Clearly this person here, they're, they're entertainers in this picture. Um, this is a beautiful space that really you are doing all the same things that you would do indoors, outdoors, but really taking their temperature to understand what products to suggest. Um, it's truly the same process that we're using on the indoor in questioning people about um, how they use a living space. Are they more formal? Are they more casual? Does it need to be low maintenance? Are there specific appliances that they have to have a pizza oven because that's the hot button for the husband or the wife, or do they need to have a rotisserie because they're going to be serving numerous people? Um, does there need to be a nice maker outside because they're an entertainer and there'll be all kinds of cocktails? There are certain categories, and this is a perfect example, um, where like lighting, where we definitely wanna have a big conversation about safety and ambiance as well as even that focal point of a fire pit and how that gets vented. But um, the client really dictates this, but also as manufacturers and, and designers and, and experts in our field, I think it's also our job to kind of push the limit just a bit and really make people aware of what can be accomplished outdoors. I know that we can probably just see ourselves sitting there, instead of being the designer, maybe lounging in front of that fire pit and the ambiance that's created by that area, or even bellying up to the bar here where the barbecue is, um, where you may have a more intimate conversation with friends and family, and then off to the right there where uh, we have the jacuzzi and, and the pool area, adding those water elements. All of those things are conversation points um, where you can create moments for your client and have it be very thoughtful um, not only indoors, but now outdoors too. One of the first things we like to do as designers is to truly lay that foundation and, and understand how are we gonna use these areas, um, but also anchor them at the same time. And in a home, we obviously are able to use 
walls. So we have four walls and, you know, are we going to wallpaper them? Are we going to paint them? You know, what are we going to do to add this personality? In working in an outdoor space that's truly outdoor, no California room, we're looking at what I call the fifth and sixth wall. And that fifth wall is the floor and the sixth wall is the ceiling. And on the floor, when we lay that foundation, there are a, a million different opportunities for, for outdoor rugs or, or even outdoor materials, whether that's decking or, or stone that we're using on the, gr the ground there. But to add a little personality, to add a little pattern, to truly anchor that space so we know that this is the lounge area and maybe an area off to the side uh, is more of a kitchen and a busy kind of traffic area that wouldn't need that area rug or that anchoring kind of space. But it is um, a really cool tool, just like we use inside, to be able to frame out, this is the lounge area, this is the dining area, this is the um, kitchen and prep area, to really define spaces. As far as regional insights um, and looking at aesthetics, we know that through um, research in the West, the most popular aesthetic is transitional. And with that transitional style, it's a little bit of traditional and a little bit of modern blended together. We also know that as far as square feet, about 500 squeet square feet um, is the average outdoor living space. And people in the West prefer that wood grain. And often we're getting wood grain through true wood materials, like you see there in the fence that's then been, or I should say in the um, handrail area that's been uh, treated. But we're also seeing that in even stainless steel cabinetry that can be made to look like wood. So that, so that organic element um, or even the woven wood aesthetic like you're seeing in this quote unquote wickered lounge um, sofa, those kind of materials are very, very much speaking to the West Coast and, and the aesthetic there. When it comes to the Midwest, we're seeing more of a contemporary aesthetic. And you can see contemporary elements here in those side chairs. Um, and similar to the West, we have about 400 square feet as far as the outdoor average outdoor living space. And the preferred finish is metallic. So these chairs here are perfect for a Midwest aesthetic um, using both metal and more of a contemporary look. When it comes to the north, Northeast, the most popular aesthetic is contemporary. And we're seeing 375 square feet as the outdoor, average outdoor living space. And again, a preferred finish of metallic. So um, I'll show you pictures coming up here. When we go to kitchen areas and we're looking at cabinetry, um, that stainless steel aesthetic and even powder coating, um, or I, I'm not sure how they could completely do it. I'm calling it powder coating. I'm sure when you talk to Mitch later next week, he'll give you the true definition of what that is. He's the absolute pro when it comes to cabinets like this, but that uh, metallic aesthetic where we can get all kinds of different uh, finishes is very popular in the Northeast. When it comes to the South, we're a bit more eclectic. Um, the average living space is 400 square feet and we have more of a textured um, finish going on. So. Even this rug here and kind of the mix of the pillows and the layering that we see here with uh, the blanket, um, this could be considered more of a South look where we have an eclectic approach and we're mixing and matching materials here. There really is no wrong answer when it comes to outdoor living. It's what feels comfortable. Let's get some fresh air. Let's get some vitamin D and uh, make it pretty along the way. We know that 60% of our homeowners used a designer when it comes to their outdoor areas. And clearly there's been a designer or at least a landscape architect or, or someone who's a pro um, selecting finishes and creating layouts here. The uh, outdoor area speaks to the architecture. There's a little bit of mix of a little bit of a contemporary vibe when it comes to that those stepping um, stones there and when it comes to the waterfall but it definitely complements what's happening at the house. We know that 41% used a landscaper or garden architect or specialist and 10% used an architect. So I think this is just showing the opportunity that we have in our roles to have a bigger conversation with our clients. Uh, our clients 
trust us as far as me being an interior designer, they trust us for their interior spaces. And there are several manufacturers probably here on this call that, that do both indoor and outdoor products. And it's very easy to continue on that conversation, um, improve that ROI when it comes to our projects by adding on that outdoor space. We're already in their personal space. There's a lot of trust involved with a personal space and um, spilling to these outdoors. This is a perfect example of how we can uh, continue that conversation while adding benefit to their life. So here's that six wall. Uh, hey, look up, getting the most of your space by installing a pergola or awning to allow versatility throughout the year. Um, that's truly what a pergola does, and um, or even an awning. And I have to say, here in California, while we're sheltered in place, our contractors are still allowed to work. They're considered essential. And while I was giving a webinar yesterday, we had the the hammering of construction going on because we installed a retractable awning, and we're so happy and grateful for it because while we do need to stay at home to be on our side patio while there is some sun shining or even a little rain coming, to be able to retract that out and have the versatility and that expanded square footage is everything. To be able to get that fresh air but be protected from the sun or protected from the rain or even just have some filtered light like this particular awning has um, is really beneficial and gives us a little bit of control over the space. Like I talked about in laying that foundation with an area rug, um, we have a little one here that's barely seen. I feel like the foundation or the anchoring has really occurred on this upper pergola area, really defining the space. This is where we lounge. This is where we, we lay out in the sun a bit and um, get a little filtered light, read a book, and really enjoy those outdoor spaces. So you can see how that, that layering approach really can create a big impact for an outdoor space. Up and over. So just talking a little bit further about the types of uh, shade structure that we can have for a space and some of the research that the National Kitchen and Bath Association has done. We've discovered that about half of homeowners install some sort of fixed overhead structure. So we have 52% there, 30% um, install a pergola, and 13%, and that, now I get to be part of that, um, have an adjustable or retractable structure. Um, and then 12% have no overhead structure at all. So that's there's our opportunity point to build on to a client's outdoor space and to understand what people are doing and enjoying. And I think this is a, a great photo of showing how that outdoor living space um, with the dining room there may be outside in the sun, but then protecting our outdoor kitchen and fireplace and lounge area with the overhead structure um, just creates a beautiful extension of this home. Again, addressing the sixth wall, they've given great detail to that ceiling, not only with fans and lighting up there, but adding that extra wood detail that number one uh, incorporates the finish that they've chosen for their dining table. So we have that seamlessness flow, but also uh, pulling some of the wood element that you may find inside, really bridging the gap between indoor and outdoor spaces. I love this little kind of shingled approach that we see on this back wall um, and then the stacked stone once again, and even a fireplace that you may find in an indoor setting with a television above it, um, really showing how um, our indoor items are, are being found outdoors as well. But imagine the airflow that we would have in the sunlight and that vitamin D fresh air um, coming through that space. Throughout all of this, we're going to want to find um, some privacy for ourselves to create some definition um, whether that's between spaces uh, in our home or between neighbors. Um, often we can do some, I love how they've uplit these floating panels, um, but often we've also done something as simple as draperies or decorative fencing or even a series of pots using cypress or bamboo 
or something um, that can just really define the space, give a little privacy, even if it's filtered, um, add an organic feel, but give you your own space. Uh, it's fun to be connected to, to our neighbors, but also it's fun to have our own party go on in our backyard and our own intimate moments that are occurring in our space. So we can screen neighbors and have some coziness at the same time. Again, this space is a great one, mixing materials. Not only do we have the floating wood panels over here, we have this interesting, almost architectural feeling screen that complements. Um, and then we have the stone elements, the slate elements, um, kind of tying everything together that you see here. I also love this planter, that layered effect is a great answer to adding privacy where we, yes, we have this, or first of all, the foliage, then the uh, floating wall there, and then in front of it, a beautifully planted uh, planter, um, just really showing some thoughtfulness, interest, and layering in our space. Again, really uh, leaning on privacy being key, um, especially when we have pets and dogs and um, just a family going on in our backyard. We want to be a bit screened in, and this is just showing a way of how layering trees and shrubs and beautiful plants, bushes, flowers can achieve that. Uh, when we have more of an established neighborhood, like this is, um, it's a little bit easier to do. Um, but again, that layering effect creates not only visual interest, but privacy. And in some areas, we still have um, cabling and wiring above ground. So larger trees like this could mask that visual that isn't always so attractive while creating privacy at the same time. Uh, and then we just have a statistic here the desire to have yard and space for their dog influenced 30%, 33% of millennials' decision to buy their first home. So, um, you know, whether we've lived there for a long time and we're in a baby boomer phase, I know we could absolutely see ourselves enjoying this space along with a little privacy and with those millennials and, and, and the dog on the loose, uh, they could enjoy this space too. So, um, especially when you have a area like this that not only has the lounge area with the fireplace, but also the, the dining area and then the pool area, which I could see even setting some loungers out here, creating different moments of space where people can interact or be by themselves um, for privacy is always key. And we talked about this a little bit before, but think like you're inside. When you're addressing your outdoor spaces, you still wanna have an area rug. You still wanna have a place to set down a drink. We wanna have furniture that's mobile and maybe can move up to another area. Um, we wanna really consider a pallet. Um, and often on the indoors, I'm recommending to homeowners as far as their, their larger pieces like this sofa here, have that be a bit more neutral. Have that be um, an element that can be kept because it's typically a piece that we invest in when it's larger, a larger furniture piece like that. So have that be a bit more neutral. So if you're not bold enough to go white, maybe go gray, um, and then being able to layer on any pillows over time and to switch that out when you change your mood um, is always a, a good piece of advice. Um, we again have, a, we have a jute rug here. We've addressed that sixth wall up top. We have the fan that's moving air around for us. Um, and just overall, because our, our flooring material that spills all the way out to our loungers here is all the same material, it creates a, creates a sense of spaciousness for us. And I could even see this material, this uh, natural stone being used on the interior and just not missing a beat between that interior and exterior space, blurring that line completely and really having just that cabana resort lounge feel. And uh, now's the perfect time for that, where we have a staycation, we get to stay at home, really address those areas. And um, maybe now that you're at home a bit more, you can really see how you can achieve this in your own space and, and think about how you can do it for others. 
I'm just reading this note here. Just, I, I love the note of side tables, chairs, and ottomans. Outdoor spaces are so versatile, and I remember um, really understanding how to multi-purpose furniture when visiting the W Hotel a few years back. I watched this lounge area that was set up and, and very um, structured in how it was set up and, and beautiful as you walk down at seven o'clock in the morning and, and no one had touched it yet, but then come back at five o'clock and it completely evolved. Chairs like this and little side tables and ottomans had been moved for intimate converse, conversations out to the side and um, smaller pieces had been brought up to have bigger conversation pits. It really can evolve and has some flexibility there if you have pieces that are a little bit more lightweight and can be moved by people of all ages to create uh, these conversations and intimate moments um, throughout uh, the day or night and when entertaining. I love creating a focal point and there's so many ways this can be done both indoors and out. Outdoors, and you can see, you know, your eye goes right to it. As soon as I pull up this slide, we have this fountain right in the center. It could easily be a fountain or a water feature, but it could also be a pizza oven. If it is a family who really loves to cook and entertain, that could almost be the entertainment for the night in having a pizza oven be that focal point. Um, fire pits are also another way um, of creating a focal point that feeling of fire and and we even have fire pits now that um, are set to music where the flames are very mellow when kenny g is playing and set set to music um, but when 50 cent is playing those flames are bouncing so talk about a focal point uh, creating our entertainment for outdoors for people of all ages um, there are a variety of ways that that can happen but when we create focal points, we find that people truly gather around those areas and it just really sets the scene and we can build around it. So you can see here with the fountain, um, water always draws people. It's complementing the backdrop of this home, uh, but also has some shrubs that have been definitely designed around the fountain. And then even a bench over here where someone can look, take in some shade and take in the sound of water, um, really kind of pushing on that wellness idea, maybe having a meditative moment here and kind of getting away from it all in your own backyard, which is definitely what we love about outdoor living and, and outdoor, outdoor loving. <laughs> Creature comforts. This is uh, all about the kitchen and about how those other areas, just like you see in your own home, you know that your kitchen is, is the hub of your home and then that spills into your living areas. And while I, we've talked today about lines being blurred between indoors and outdoors, I think um, we've all seen that, and especially in the NKBA research, that the lines have been blurred between our living spaces and our entertaining kitchen spaces. Uh, we have people load into the kitchen table, but also have the TV on and viewing distance, um, and then people bellying up to the bar. And it doesn't always have to be for a cocktail, but it absolutely could be. Um, it could be for working on a laptop. And I'm sure um, you've found that in your home while working from home that uh, that island area is is a hot a hot spot for for many people in the family to just use their iPad, their phone, their laptop to connect and engage with people in a different way that may not be in that actual space. Um, I love that countertop overhang that gives us the ability to tuck our knees under there at that bar space and then really be a part of the cooking action when that grill top opens up and the flames start going and food starts being served, that person's in the catbird seat and uh, can also have one eye over on uh, the television area too. We know that 60% of our, 62% of our outdoor kitchens have a TV, 62% have built-in storage or cabinets, and 58% boast of a fire pit, 26% feature a wine refrigerator, and 25% install an ice maker. And I feel like all of those elements mentioned allow 
all the guests or family members to really be a part of the action. Um, with that wine refrigerator, it allows people to not wait for the host to be pouring wine. They can jump up and be a part of the hosting and serving um, and the party part of the action, uh, just like the host does, and maybe take a little pressure off that person that, that's cooking out on the grill. Um, with that ice maker, um, we've seen it happen in the kitchen inside, and now we're seeing it happen on the outside, where maybe you saw, maybe not here, because this, uh, this is so beautiful here, but finding a space on the other side to install an ice maker, or someone that is even is a guest of a party, or maybe the mixologist of the family can belly up, start creating drinks, and be a part of that entertaining action. And I think we're seeing it more than ever in outdoor areas where there's a casual feel and there's a great vibe going on where everyone wants to be a part of the action. So someone's lighting the fire pit, someone's queuing up the playlist, someone's on the grill, someone's making cocktails, and we all get to really interact with each other and um, make for a great party and a great interaction and, and just a great time outdoors. Well, we know you'll get hungry. That that happens every time. And and look at this. This is like restaurant quality kind of a, a kitchen here. Um, being able to stock a refrigerator um, under under. Let's see. So we're over here stocking our refrigerator and being able to be on the grill and and just have a variety of ways where we have beans on a, on a flat top and and uh, we have uh, dogs on the grill. And oh my gosh, we just made. A, some carnitas on our asado, being able to have that smoker activity go on um, is just incredible. The It really is taking care of all of our senses. Um, we get to see the action, but we get to smell that action. You can just envision yourself sitting up at this bar. We have this covered area with speakers, with heat, with television, Everything has been thought of in this space and even being able to control the light with shutters that look like they could be indoors as well, spilling outdoors um, to for certain times of the day, be able to control that light and then have a thoughtful floor material that can be easily hosed down, not to mention these cabinets that can be easily hosed down and really stand up to all the weather and all the elements. We have a countertop out here that's durable enough to handle those UV rays and um, just nice long poles and hardware on the cabinetry. Um, again, this is kind of an, an espresso color on here. So we're paying attention to palette and really having some choice there, but also getting all of our storage taken care of here. I have a, a small, a very not <laughs> a very small version of this on my patio. Maybe it's like this big on my side patio, but I do have these stainless steel cabinets in espresso with the long poles. And I leave my dishes, my um, hot mitts, my silverware, everything that we use outdoors, our placemats, our napkins in these cabinets right here. And so I'm not carting them indoors and out only to wash them, of course, but um, they are staged out there. So it's raining all season long. And when I come back out to those sunny months, they are protected. There is no water inside these cabinets. Um, it's just really a beautiful situation to be able to come back to it and have everything be sheltered, protected, and uh, ready to go for the season. I'm going to ask for some recipes from you guys now that we've seen all these grills. We, we got to get some recipes together as a group. Let's talk about the, the square footage. We talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but um, just looking at areas here, and, and again, this is amazing as far as indoor outdoor space goes. Most outdoor kitchens, 66% are between 100 and 400 square feet, including a sitting area in the meal preparation space. 22% are more than 400 square feet and 12% are just under 100 square feet. I think there are so many products. I mean, when you have this kind of space, yeah, it's a no brainer. I want the TV, I want the grill, I want the dining area, I want the lounge and, and look at all these great materials being mixed together and how fantastic this looks. 
but I got to say, um, while we wanted these pictures to be aspirational, I am floored by the type of products that have been created. And there are some leaders in our market, and we can email about it later, and I'll put up a blog so that um, you know some of our favorites. But um, there are some products being made out in the market today that it truly does not matter what size your little patio it is. It might just be a balcony or a little front porch or a little teeny tiny postage stamp of a veranda. And um, you can have, number one, a portable grill that you can go take tailgating and then bring back home and put on a stand so you can have it on your little balcony. Um, you can have an electric version of a grill so you can start barbecuing some hot dogs out on your porch and make all your, your neighbors jealous. Um, and then even smaller scale furniture and smaller scale fire pits and of course, you're always going to want to check with your CCNRs and, and make sure that you're allowed to do, do certain things. But the products that are available today, really the sky is the limit as far as that goes. And um, that goes for lighting, that goes for seating, that goes for grilling, um, just so many innovations that there's really no excuse, even if you are in that 100 squ square feet area or even lower, just having a little patio. Well, this is my favorite part. You guys would know that. I love this color splash. And while often uh, we go very neutral outside, it's it's also a place where you can go very bold. It absolutely makes you smile to see this space. And maybe this area looks nothing like the inside. We we talk about flow, and we absolutely could. If that's if it's navy blue and white on the inside, we could absolutely do navy blue and white out here. But Maybe this is your time to do something that looks like nothing on the inside and just to really express yourself and have some fun and have a real visual impact, a real statement when it comes outside. Um, these materials are so fantastic, allowing us to do everything that we do indoors. We're welting cushions on top and bottom to create some contrast. We're creating shapes that are interesting and organic feeling um, and also creating a conversation pit at the same time. We have certain colors on the front, certain colors on the back, welting on the edge. So you really can let your imagination run wild and have it even complement what you've done when it comes to landscape. You can complement uh, these kind of pink colors that are happening in the flowers, the greens that are happening in the plants, and bring it into your scene. Um, these are all colors that we see in nature just in an amplified way. Our blues like the sky and the water, our greens like the foliage and the pinks like our flowers and the yellow like the sun. So it, it all works for sure. Uh, and then to have these little pods that can be moved, um, you could easily kick your feet up on this. You could have someone sit on it and talk to you face to face and or you could bring it up for your coffee or your cocktail to use as a little side table there. Um, so we love this color splash and, uh, and, and we dare you, we dare you to try it. Finishing touches. So along with that accessorizing, we really wanna think about lighting um, and the stainless steel is really the finish that is what people are going to when it comes to the kitchen area. Um, but this is showing how we can layer lighting for those finishing touches. Again, something that looks like we would do it inside, um, but uh, stainless steel, similar to our kitchens that we are seeing here in America, very popular as far as um, a finish goes. So we have that stainless steel is the grill finish uh, choice for 77% of homeowners, 75% um, have additional burners and 57% have warming racks. 50% with a rotisserie. So we're having things outside that we don't even have in our indoor kitchen. So it's a real opportunity um, to not only have finishing touches such as lighting and, and decor, but also those added elements when it comes to grilling and uh, making something a little bit special when it comes to outdoors. And this is that ambiance that we talked about, lighting up the night. Um, that color, that lighting scheme is really key for a space. Um, often we're not only doing a fire pit, 
but also doing lanterns, like lanterns down here. You can see the top of one here um, and foot lighting um, so that no matter what the age is, we can see what's happening as far as our pathways go. And then sconce lighting outside just to really illuminate where our entry points are. We have these doors stacking back going inside. So beautiful coming out to the outer end. Adirondack chairs. Um, that layered lighting approach, just as we do indoors, is one that we really want to consider outside. Another thing that I love, like I showed you on that one fence, up lighting a fence or a floating wall, as well as up lighting some of your most beautiful trees in the yard, um, always creates just a visual, a visually beautiful aesthetic and, and kind of its own artwork in a way by using light. So those are all layers to consider for sure. This is talking about, you know, again, going back on, there's really no excuse of, of not having an outdoor kitchen. I'm um, talking about the types of fuel that there is. We have 31% of homeowners who have two grills. How lucky are they um, in their outdoor kitchen? 44% use propane, 45% connect to natural gas, and 22% are charcoal. And a lot of times people are mixing up the type of fuel to get different results in their food. So that's definitely an option. Um, smoking is definitely an option, um, but just making you aware of what people are drawn to and have in their kitchens currently and the opportunity that we have um, to sell more going forward. Um, I would add to that the pellet and electric grills that I talked about as well as the ones that um, can be in more of a, a carry along tailgating kind of um, party approach. So we could take that anywhere, but look at this lineup here. I mean, just taking in all the elements, this person better know how to cook. This better not all be for looks <laughs> because they definitely have an audience to be preparing some food for. Setting the mood. This is a great part of it, I feel like, again, speaking to those senses, so often um, I've gone to a party and while I love the conversation, I feel a little uncomfortable because I'm wondering where that extra kind of noise layer is. Where is that music? Where is that playlist that really sets the mood for the kind of party we're going to have? And um, I'm just looking for a little background music, but when someone has that thoughtful layer of creating a playlist that is specific for the party, whether that's a holiday party or something that feels a little more tropical for being outside. Um, having that create that extra layer um, to a party is very important in my opinion. In my opinion, you can see that these people um, have speakers that, of course, are used for the television, but absolutely are made for a music system as well. And it just makes your, whether it's game day or, or eating outdoors, having that al fresco kind of party um, a little bit better when we have the appropriate playlist paired with what we're doing. It, um, it just uh, really puts a period on the end of the sentence when it comes to having a party. We know that people wish they spent a little more money on uh, certain things. And one of them is the shade structure or shade enclosure. Um, other people wish they had a little bit of a bigger space. Others wish that they spent more money on their counter. And I think countertops are something to really think through as far as what you're specifying as designers, what you're including. Um, some materials definitely hold up better than others. And there are specific materials made out there in the world that we really want to promote. One of them um, can take a blowtorch to it. So when I'm putting a blowtorch to a countertop, I know that it's going to handle my UV rays, the snow, the sun, everything going on. And that's what we're, we'll want to consider out there. Um, we have 9% that wish that they spent more money on lighting control and 7% wishing they spent more money on cabinets um, and storage. So I know Mitch Slater, our, our good friend, will be speaking with you um, next week in his webinar. So he'll be able to talk about that cabinetry and storage in depth really talking through what you should do and all the options that are out there. Natural stone is the choice of 57% of homeowners for outdoor countertops, followed by quartz at 23%. And there are some materials that 
um, are even better than that. That um, really, like I said, can hold up to that blowtorch and um, take you through the summer months and, and the snowy months too. So those are all ones to research, but this is what is um, going on in our, our kitchens today. Outdoor kitchens today, I should say. And we're always looking for low maintenance materials, um, whether that is indoors or outdoors. And again, I just applaud our manufacturers for the type of materials that they've introduced outdoors, allowing us to use all weather teak and wicker and aluminum, providing a ton of options for us to use um, when it comes to furniture. Also to fabrics, I'm blown away. I've seen so many incredible outdoor fabrics that I would not hesitate to use indoors or outdoors. They look so fantastic. They have an incredible hand to them. And they also allow us to have the kids, the pets, the wine parties, and um, really hold up to our busy lifestyles so that we can be outside all year long if we wanted to be. Landscaping with materials such as concrete, gravel, and even artificial turf not only give low maintenance to a space, but they keep our costs down and require very little to no water, um, which was something that we were really having a rough time uh, last year in California and some years prior. So not only having it be low maintenance, but not have to be watered all the time is something to consider and, and part of that client conversation as we design these outdoor spaces. And I'm gonna give it to you guys, um, just a little, another bit of our research with NK NKBA. We have found that the male head of household takes the lead in outdoor cooking 75% of the time. But I, I'm gonna challenge uh, some of us ladies to get out there on the grill um, and just cook in a different way and get it side by side with our guys out there and um, and just, just test some new recipes and have some fun with it. There's a real effortlessness and a casual feel when we're cooking outdoors. And I think it's something to celebrate and um, we, we can all clean up together that way. And just to give you some hard numbers here, and I know we're running out of time, I wanna get your questions, um, but to round up things, our bottom line, our typical spend is about $13,000 on an outdoor kitchen, but about 22% of homeowners are building very high-end kitchens, which we're considering, this is outdoor kitchens, uh, we're considering $30,000 and above, and 14% spend between twenty dollars and $30,000. So once again, that's just on outdoor kitchens, and we're um, sharing that with you to show the opportunity that there is for designers, manufacturers, landscape people, just all of us in this together um, to have that conversation. Clearly, this outdoor edition uh, was a bit more, um, but absolutely beautiful and showing how we have these different areas, whether it's the water feature, whether it's the conversation around the fire pit here, um, the covered area where people may want to stay out of the sun, the dining area, and of course, that outdoor kitchen with the TV above. Give me a break. So fantastic. Um, great to see that people are investing in these types of spaces. I'm ready for your questions and I appreciate you guys being here with me today. And um, we're always posting information on outdoor living. Like I said, I will post um, this up in case you missed any of those stats on my blog. And I know NKBA usually backs up as well. So they're always sharing the information. But if you'd like to follow me, these are the places to find me. And um, I'm happy to talk outdoor living with you. Well, thank you so much, Carrie. This has been great. Um, a lot of great information, wonderful presentation. So I've been collecting questions. And um, do you have any favorite tricks for handling mosquitoes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here, I'll tell you what, I mean, it, I'm down and dirty kind of girl here, I guess. Um, we light the citronella candles and, and hope that they go away. Um, and I think any flame, um, whether that's a fire pit, it's the lanterns, like I said, we do the citronella candles. Um, I think the layered approach in that way not only creates ambiance, but hopefully we'll get some of those buggers away from us. Okay. And I think there's some kind of a plant called the mosquito plant too. I've heard about Ooh, that. Ooh, good one. <laughs> and so just to comment real quick here. So someone said that Caesar Stone just launched their first UV resistant outdoor courts. So I wanted to add that. Okay. 
And then um, people have been asking if the TVs that you've been showing, are they smart TVs? Uh, it's a variety. And those pictures all came from Interior Design Magazine. So um, we can research that and see if we have any brands to share with you. Um, yeah, I have not had smart TVs specifically in our designs, um, but we can find out for the pictures that I showed you. Okay, great. Here's another one about pests. Do your outdoor cabinets proof against bugs and pests? You know, I got to say, so I think this is my experience again, and um, I haven't had any calls from homeowners where we <laughs> put this in, but um, in my stainless steel cabinets uh, that close, and when they close, they just, it's almost like they seal so tight. Um, that's why no, I can't even believe none of the rainwater gets in. I always expect to see dirt and water, or something in there, and I don't. So um, even with the trash receptacles, I have not seen pests and and little buggers in there. I have not. Um, there is a specific seat seal on there, and I know, you know, I got mine from Mitch Slater, so <laughs> I know he's speaking on his webinar next week and can talk to that even further. But I've been extremely pleased with um, my version of stainless steel cabinets and not seen any rodents or anything in there. Great, thank you. So let me keep going. <laughs> and um, let's see, so what are your strategies for wind? You know, I think that the versatility, the, um, you know, I don't, I want certain pieces to be light enough to be able to move around and certain ones to be weighted so they don't fly away. So um, there are often when we're designing, we're doing like a concrete table to have a weighted element to it, um, weighted lanterns so they're not blowing over. But, you know, we do take our cushions in when our cushions need to be brought in due to weather or wind. Um, we do uh, strap down things like, um, or tie back things like uh, the draperies that are creating privacy. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of it is just being thoughtful about how we take care of our things and, um, making sure that certain things are weighted that we know we aren't going to move and then other elements can be lifted and stored um, with ease. Okay, so let me just read a couple of things here that have been coming in about the mosquitoes. Oh, so some folks are saying that the citronella plant that I mentioned, they do not repel mosquitoes. Thank you okay. for that. And then but the person, another person said that there are some herbs that you can use, like rosemary, lemon balm, mosquito plant, lavender that will help. Uh -huh. And um, Let's see what else. And something about uh, they also keep the fruit flies out of your wine. So there we go. Well, <laughs> now we're talking. And, you know, just those ones that were mentioned as far as herbs, can't you just see those just in little terracotta pots lined up across your kitchen area? How cute and smells so good. And, you know, that's taking care of all kinds of business there. Oh, yeah. And one more ceiling fans work great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. OK, good. So let's keep going. Thank you. Um, someone is asking about, um, your, okay, we did the strategies for wind. Do you know the material for the countertops or the brands in some of the photos that you were showing? I do. So I got it. Okay. Am I allowed to reveal who I took a blowtorch to? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Cosentino is an amazing countertop company and they have created Decton and I'm sure you guys have seen the product that Gabe is. Um, but to be able to take a, a blowtorch to a material and lets me know that the UV rays are going to be just fine. So I've had a lot of confidence in that. Um, in the past, I've been scared to put quartz out in such hot temperatures. I mean, we get up to at least 104 in the summer, and I was always uh, leery to put that out for a client. But now that we have down and I have it in my own outdoor space, I just, that's something that I really believe in and I know is in a lot of the pictures that you guys saw today. Um, other ones included natural materials. Um, I don't know any other brand names um, outside of that, but um, hopefully that will get you started. Okay, great. Um, so someone is asking what sources like magazines, social channels, websites uh, do you use to stay in the know with trends or to find inspiration? Mm, well, I got to say Nat National Kitchen and Bath Association and the research that they do, a lot of the inspiration for this um, presentation came from a magazine that was sent out 
by the NKBA and gave the statistics of all the research that they did. So I was so pleased to be able to pull information and beautiful pictures um, from that document. But I feel like even Instagram now, as we scroll through feeds, we're finding so many beautiful products. Um, we really do lean heavily on our reps in the industry to share products with us um, and have those conversations continue as we talk through all the innovation that's happening with outdoor living. Um, so those those are some big inspiration places for me and going to places like KBiz where you see it all put together. Okay, here's a question. Um, this person said, I didn't see uh, any DWs. Do you recommend them at all, especially in the larger kitchens? Yeah, always. I mean, I can't even, to not have to bring dishes inside, I mean, just keep everything completely outdoors is amazing. I think um, we're putting so many dishwasher drawers um, inside that I could absolutely see that outside in larger kitchens too, especially because you may not have um, as much to clean up out outside, um, depending on what kind of plates and, and things you're using. Um, but I think that's a fantastic idea, just making sure you have the appropriate drainage and hookups and all those types of things. But you guys are, are pros, so I know you know that. Okay. Um, so someone is asking uh, what you consider the best outdoor countertop material that can withstand the sun. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Decton lover. Okay. That's a, that sums it up. <laughs> yeah. How about this? Um, it's Is it a must to have... Um, to vent the fire pits and our grills once there's a covering? Yeah, oh well, um, yes, you'll wanna talk through with whoever's, work, whatever contractor's working on the job as far as code and that sort of thing. Um, yes, I would say that is definitely a point to have a bigger conversation about depending on the distance between um, your cover and the fire pit. And often that is even caused to put the fire pit all the way outdoors um, versus under a cover. There's a couple people out there that are agreeing with you yep. <laughs> about Decton. Oh, so, good. Yeah, good. Um, so here's another one. Um, we were talking a little bit about, um, let's see here, the best way to add audio or uh, would it be hardwired versus Bluetooth? You know, it could be either one. It's so funny. That's a real area where you could go high or low. I have been totally surprised at some of the Bluetooth portable speakers that I, just like that portable grill I talked about, bring your portable skirt and you can just like have an outdoor party anywhere. So, I mean, this could be a picnic too. I'm just saying, let's get outdoors and <laughs> have some great layers to all of it. Um, and uh, while if you're in new construction and have the opportunity to plan for the speakers to be in the scene or in a, in a fake rock or, you know, whatever your version may be, that's great. Um, but a quickie until you can make that happen is to absolutely use a Bluetooth speaker. We've had a lot of fun doing that. Good. Um, so here's a question about privacy screens. Do you have any good ideas for creating something temporary, say for a condo that won't allow permanent structures? That's where I would go to the potted plants because uh, I can't deny that. And if you could get something with a little hardiness and some height, um, then I think you, it's not only organic and hopefully the person on the other side is going to enjoy it too. Um, it's not permanent and you can take it with you. Okay. Uh, this person was wondering about the Midwest. Um, they're also using outdoor living or is it mainly concentrated in the warmer states? You know, that's where, um, in the beginning we started, there was, a um, Mitch Slater and his team at, at Brown Jordan, along with, uh, ASID did research that just came out. And interest in outdoor living areas is comparable across both warm and four season climates. And so they are both at, um, six, well, 66% um, for warm climates and 62% for four season climates. So um, I think with that innovation and the durability that we're talking about of these products, you really can do it if rain or shine, snow or shine. <laughs> Okay, good. So you're saying that Decton then would be something good in the cold environment as we've... Yeah, yeah. De the only thing with Decton is you got to have the right fabricator. Once you have the right fabricator, Crescentino makes an amazing product. And so, um, yeah, we've been very pleased. Good. Uh, is there an out... Uh, getting back to the dishwasher, is there an outside rated dishwasher? This person said she hasn't been able to find one. I don't, I don't know of one rated for outdoor specifically. 
Um, but if we're in a covered area, I would be more um, apt to use it, but I would definitely check with your local person that does appliances. Okay, good. So now we're going to talk about costs a little bit. Where are the average costs coming from? Uh, this person says, I'm in Silicon Valley, and we are looking at over 75K for, 100, 400, for a 400 square size space, including overhang counters and appliances. That's 400 square feet. Yeah. Um, like I said, and I, are you putting up anything, Debbie, about this um, webinar afterwards? Or yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing the, I'll be putting the recording Roundup. out. Yes. Okay. So um, I was going to say, I'll put up the stats on the blog too, so you all can reference it. It is for every area. These are averages that the NKBA has done the research for. And with the labor shortage that we have going on and um, with depending on what materials we're using, there's definitely a range there. So I'm, I won't quote specific numbers, but um, when we go back to posting up the blog and kind of rounding up everything, um, I'll include that in there so that they can reference that. But Silicon Valley, I mean, we're in California where it, sometimes it's not even the product price, it's the labor price. So uh, it's, it's gonna be different for different areas, obviously. Yeah, I would think that would be true too. Okay, let me just see if there's anything else here. Uh, someone said something about Sub-Zero Wolf may have an outdoor dishwasher that might be cool. worth looking into. Yeah. And um, and so someone also, another comment in Northern British Columbia in Canada, they swear by oh. Delton. So there you go. All right. Yeah. So um, it's just uh, at the top of the hour, a little after one right now, and I'm not seeing any other questions. I want to thank you so much. Uh, Carrie, for being with us today and providing this great information and uh, sharing um, your time. Well, the topic was an uplift for me. So thanks, you guys. And thanks for tuning in all, all around the world here. That was really exciting. And I look forward to hearing about your outdoor spaces. Thanks, Carrie. Have a great day. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.